Now for the legs on this fly, we're going to take this speckled hen back. And we're going to pull off a couple of the same size feathers here. And what you can do is if you want to measure this, you want to make sure that it's not too long and it's not too short. Um, and what you're trying to do is find barbs, which the barbs are the individual fibers that come off the main stem of the feather. And you want those barbs to stick out in a proportionate manner. So you want to choose hackles that are going to be the right proportion. And you're going to take and go ahead and stack these two feathers, one on top of the other. This will just give it a little bit fuller look of legs. You can use just one feather, but two of them is going to make it look a little bit fuller on the legs. We're going to come in and we're going to pull all this under plumage off of it. Strip these down. Make sure you try and get them both even on the same side. Then you're going to come and pull, just slightly pull all these fibers back out of the way. And they'll reverse back on themselves. And you can come in on those feathers and just trim off those actual tips so that you have a tie-in point. We're going to tie these in right on top, facing back that way. So now you've got all this stuff that you're going to end up pulling forward. Um, so our next step is we're going to use good old-fashioned hair's ear dubbing here. And we're just going to take a good sized chunk of this because you're going to end up using quite a bit of it. And we're going to dub in some of this hair's ear dubbing. And you can make a pretty big fat noodle on this one. You don't have to worry about keeping it small. Um, we're going to wrap and make a nice little ball right here at the back. Okay, so we put one little ball there. And now just to add some more wiggle and some more stuff to this fly to really especially for muddy water this rubber adding these rubber legs to it will just give it some movement and make it a little more visible in the dirty water so we're going to take a little bit of this live living rubber and I'm going to take and tie this on right here and we're going to take one wrap over it and kind of pin it up against that dubbing on the back and we'll wrap up forward and leave yourself room to put dubbing in front of it. That'll allow us to keep both these legs sticking out to the side. So we'll do it on one side. Tie another set of legs in on the other side here. And make sure you keep them right down the two sides. You don't want them to really be right on top. You want them to be on the side of that shank of that hook. So we've got our two sets of legs. Now we revisit our dubbing here. And you can go ahead and use pretty good chunks of it here because you can come back in later with a bodkin and pick out this dubbing to make it look even a little buggier if you want. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this dubbing. I'm going to pull these two rear rubber legs back out of the way and wrap this dubbing right up on them. And it's alright if that dubbing's fairly loose. It doesn't need to be real tight. Now see how it splayed both those legs back at a slight angle? And take a little more dubbing. Now you want to probably go a little narrower on your dubbing here and not use quite as big a chunks because you don't want to fill up that space up by the bead too much because if you get too much material up here you still have all this stuff you're going to have to pull forward and you'll end up crowding that eye of that hook and not getting a very clean head. Now we're going to pull those front rubber legs back out of the way and wrap some dubbing right up on the head of them just to get them to splay back a little bit. And you, you'll have to play with them a little bit to get them exactly where you want it. But I really like where those are at. They're kind of, we've got the rear two splaying back just a little bit and these are pretty perpendicular to the hook. Now we're gonna take our two hen fibers, stroke those fibers back out of the way, pull it forward. If they're a little long here, you can come in, just give a little pull against the stem and it'll pull those off. You lay those in place on top, tie them off, 
and that'll just give you a nice little set of legs there in addition to the rubber legs that are already there. Now we're going to pull our Mylar flash over the top of that to give it a little sparkle. When you tie this Mylar in and you get it tied down, I see a lot of people just come in and they'll trim it right here. The problem with that is this material is extremely slippery and you'll want to really lock it into place. So what I do is I make my couple wraps and I pull it backwards and really make sure to try and get a couple wraps right on top of that. And what that's doing is pinching and locking that Mylar in place so that it won't pop open. Then you can trim it off and we'll pull our last bit of thin skin now over the top for our wing case. And this is going to serve two purposes. One, it's going to give it that little bit of model look and allow that Mylar to shine through. Make a couple wraps. Do the same thing and kind of lock it into place here. Trim that off. Now we're, for the most part, done with the actual tying of this fly. Just give it a couple whip finishes here. Cut off that thread. Now what we want to do is come in and we're going to trim these rubber legs just a slightly bit longer than that. Those legs from that hen fiber. Get those trimmed off. All right, now one last little step here. You could, you could fish this fly just as it is, um, just fine, but if you really want to get that sparkle to pop out through that and also just give this a little bit of a neat look to it, I'm going to take this UV Knot Sense that Loon makes. Um, it's kind of like epoxy, but a lot easier to use. Put a little jollop of it on some paper. Take our bodkin. Pick up some of the material. The nice part about that thin skin is since it is kind of that, like a sandwich bag, this won't soak through it, so it'll sit right on top. So I'm going to end up putting a little bit of this UV right on top of that plastic. And then the way this UV stuff cures is with an ultraviolet light. So I've got this little pin, I can just zap it real quick. Give it a couple zaps, and what that'll do is cure that material. Which you could also use epoxy, but if you're going to use epoxy, then you've got to mix it and tie a whole bunch of them and try and get all those cases done at one time. Um, the nice part about the UV stuff is you can just you can do it individually as needed. And that's the finished 20-incher with the rubber legs and the epoxy back.